parasites. It is said that they make up half of all described species, yet they live in a world of secrecy. Some are microscopic, like viruses or bacteria. Others are quite large. Worm-like parasites are not limited to the third world countries or tropical countries like some think. They might be in your neighborhood, maybe even in your next meal. From Dr. Shaw's parasitology tutorials comes Fasciola hepitica, or the sheep liver fluke. You know it's not even raining, right? Oh yes, of course. Come. Sheep liver fluke typically infects sheep, as the name implies, but it can also infect other ruminants, such as cattle, as well as humans, and basically any other vertebrate. Although it is estimated that 17 million people worldwide are afflicted by this parasite, it is often neglected of attention. Fasciolysis, the name for the disease caused by the parasite, also causes considerable livestock losses. No other vector-borne disease has as much of a longitudinal, latitudinal, or altitudinal distribution as Fasciola hepitica. Its ability to overwinter in vertebrates and its adaptability to a range of hosts has allowed it to infiltrate temperate zones such as the UK, where the adults survive the long winter in vertebrates only to continue their life cycle in spring. If you want to learn more about this amazing parasite, stick around and we'll cover its phylogeny, life cycle, and virulence, as well as some cool research concerning treatment and management of this parasite. The sheep liver fluke belongs to the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Platyhelminthes, the class Trematoda, subclass Digenia, order Echinostomida, family Fasciolidae, and genus Fasciola. Most importantly, Fasciola hepitica belongs to the phylum Platyhelminthes, or the flatworms, and the subclass Digenia, which means two generations. This group is commonly called the flukes, and their name refers to their tendencies to have very complex life cycles. Of the four strictly parasitic subclasses of Platyhelminthes, only Cestoidea, the tapeworms, and Digenia, the flukes, have impacting virulence on humans and livestock. The genus Fasciola contains flukes that infect sheep, hippos, humans, and a range of other vertebrates. The typical life cycle of flukes has a vertebrate host as its primary host, as well as an intermediate snail host. Let's focus now on the life cycle of Fasciola hepitica in particular. The sheep liver fluke has seven different developmental forms. They are an egg, myrcidium, sporocyst, redia, cercaria, metacercaria, and adult. The adult lives in the bile duct of the vertebrate host, which is usually a sheep but can also be a human. Eggs then exit the host through its feces, which is considered its diagnostic stage. The egg then develops into an embryo in water, which eventually releases the myrcidium. This stage is designed to seek out and penetrate the tissue of a snail. Inside the snail host, it then forms a sporocyst, which develops into a redia. Cercaria are released from the redia and exit the snail. Again, the parasite is free-living inside a body of water. Since these stages are microscopic, they could theoretically live in a body of water ranging from a puddle to a pond. Once the swimming cercaria finds a water plant, to attach to, it sheds its tail and enters its infective life stage, the metacercaria. This stage of the parasite latches on to plants found near the water to maximize its likelihood of transmission to the sheep. Unfortunately, this makes it possible for it to enter the human body also. So if you do get fresh vegetables from the supermarket, make sure to always wash them vigorously. Once the metacercaria is ingested by the sheep, it exists in the duodenum, penetrates the intestinal wall, abdominal cavity and liver, eventually settling in the bile duct. This is where the adult parasite lives the remainder of its disgusting life. So why the bile duct, you may ask? Well, that's a great question. It is amazing that an organism can live in the bile duct because bile is an extremely strong surfactant, which would quickly destroy the cell membrane involves any other organism. It is much like an animal living in a tub of detergent. The adult feeds on blood and tissues in the bile duct, using its sucker on its anterior end. It has a fairly complex morphology, illustrated in this picture. 
This slide shows a female fluke carrying eggs. They can release up to 25,000 eggs per day into the digestive tract. The adults have separate sexes, thus requiring the host to carry more than one adult for reproduction to ensue. Aside from peering into the bile duct of the host, the eggs are the only way to diagnose whether one has fasciola hepatica living inside them. They are yellow-brown and should be numerous in the feces. This graphic shows the size differences between the adult and its other life stages. Notice that, aside from the adult, they are all microscopic. The myricidium is the life stage meant for seeking out and penetrating the tissues of snails. Sheep liver fluke has adapted to using a range of snail species in the family Limnaeidae as its vector, but the most widely studied of these species has to be Galba truncatula. Pictured here is a Pomacea brigesii, strictly for visual aid. In the body of the snail develops a sporocyst and radia, which release cercaria into the environment. In Kendall and Olerenshaw's 1963 study, it was found that one snail treated with multiple myricidia and fed a high-quality diet yielded 2,275 cercaria. The metacercaria then simply lay in wait for a vertebrate to inadvertently eat them. In these sheep would be living the adult form of fasciola hepatica, looking much like this. Once the metacercaria enter the vertebrate body, there are a number of things that can cause host virulence. The first is the damage done by its journey through the body's tissues on its way to the bile duct. Holes in the liver and other body parts can cause pain, inflammation, and secondary infections. Valero et al. 2006 presented a study titled High Risk of Bacteriobilia in Advanced Experimental Chronic Fasciolosis. In this study, Valero et al. infected rats with fasciola hepatica and exposed them to sources of bacteria. They found that depending on the severity of the infection, the risk of secondary bacterial infection intensified. They also found that obstruction of the bile duct by the fluke is related to the rats experiencing bilary sepsis, or intense swelling. The other source of virulence caused by the fluke is damage caused in the bile duct itself, leading to cholangitis, or gallbladder infection, cholecystitis, or severe swelling of the bile duct, and cholelithiasis, also called bilary colic or gallstones. These can cause a range of symptoms including stomach pains, nausea, vomiting, greasy stool, and even jaundice. These symptoms can be diagnostic of bile duct cancer, infection, or autoimmune disease. Thus, fasciolysis is commonly misdiagnosed. If these symptoms land you in the doctor's office, there is no harm in asking for an inspection of your feces under a microscope in case it is fasciolysis. In that case, there are treatment options. Triclobendazole is a drug used to treat liver fluke infection and works by binding to beta tubulin, blocking polymerization of microtubules. Unfortunately, it has been discovered that fasciola hepatica is becoming resistant to the drug in a variety of different locations. In a fascinating study by Walker et al. 2007, it was found using a PCR assay that 10 different haplotypes existed in a single cow at one time. This test was repeated for five more animals and similar diversity was found. It is hypothesized that this degree of gene pool diversity paired with selective forces imposed by treatment results in very rapid evolution of resistance. That's all the time we have for this edition of Dr. Shaw's Parasitology Tutorials. I hope you learned a lot, but if you'd like to learn more, you can visit the World Health Organization's website at this address or you can contact your physician. If you'd like to watch more fascinating movies on parasites, search YouTube for Dr. Shaw's Parasitology Tutorials. Well, my name is Chris Levitt. I'll see you later.